Welcome to the only thing that matters, getting your startup to product market fit here on Chicago Founders TV. Mark Andreessen famously talks about product market fit as the only thing that matters, because without it, your startup is dead. Today, we're gonna to talk about a special type of startup, marketplaces, networks, and platforms. They're special in two ways. One, achieving product market fit is very difficult to do because you have the proverbial chicken egg problem. Without buyers, how do you get sellers to show up? Without sellers, how do you get buyers to show up? Solving that paradox is a challenging riddle, but a critical one. And the second reason it's so important is because once you do, you have an incredibly defensible and powerful business. Today's episode features my friend Matt Maloney, founder of Grubhub. Grubhub is a great success story and one of Chicago's biggest hits with an over $3 billion market cap. Matt, in his founder story interview, talks about how they solved the challenge of the chicken egg problem and how they came up with a clever but very effective hack to capture supply first to be able to drive demand. How did you pull that off? How did you make the chicken egg? I just saw the chicken egg problem of the yeah. two-sided marketplace. What, what was it that made it work? Kind of walk us through how you solved that problem. I, so I'll tell you the, the truth. I think that it's a intestinal fortitude is what you have to have to, to win that game. And you said it. We've been doing this since 2004. I mean, a lot of people are just hearing about Grubhub for the first time now, but it has taken a very long time. And, and Mike, you know, our, our co-co-founder from Philly, um, he's been doing it since the same time frame. Like, it just takes a long time. And the way that we did it was we recognized that in, in, the, uh, in the balance, in the restaurant-diner balance, there's absolutely no, rest, no value to the restaurants if there's not diners. So we had to get the diners first. But the diners don't give a shit unless the restaurants are there. So we went out and, and we collected every menu in the, the areas that we were covering. So in Chicago, we went around on bikes and cars and we picked up every delivery menu and we keyed that data in so that we actually had a, a lush set of data for anyone who is looking at the time in Lakeview for delivery food, they could come there and see any restaurant they wanted, whether or not you could order on Grubhub or whether they're paying a subscription fee at the time or not. And I remember when we went to San Francisco in October of 2007, you know, Mike flew out to San Francisco and went around with one of his friends and picked up every pickup and delivery menu in San Francisco. And that's, that's the truth. So that's one of our main competitive differentiators is we have the largest network of restaurants. How many restaurants are all menus, just the menu side? How many restaurants? Well, so we think about it in two different ways. So we think you know, now over 14,000 restaurants uh, doing online ordering. And then we have this massive database of over 250,000 menus. So we have, wow. we, as I said earlier, we collect content first to make sure we bring diners in and then we show them how easy and fun it is to order online. Um, and so, so that's the way we think about the business. That's great. I mean, that's a, that's a tough problem to solve. I think there aren't a lot of people who've solved it. That's really... We're, you know, we're a technology company, and so we're also constantly innovating on that theme of service. So Mike just talked about the systems that we have behind the customer service team, um, which is an example of how we scaled customer service, but you know, it's also a way that we differentiate and, and, and help our service providers provide a higher level of service. We recently invented a, a tablet device similar to, to an iPad. It's actually a repurposed Kindle Fire. Uh, and we call it the order hub, and what it does is it digitally receives and confirms orders on the restaurant side. Um, we actually, years and years ago, pioneered the concept of sending an order via fax machine. Little known fact, uh, the fax machine is actually the preferred method of digital communication uh, in restaurants. I don't know why. They love fax machines. It's in almost every restaurant, and that's life. And so we adapt. So, so, so talk about that for a minute, because I think, sure. you know, we, most startups fail because they don't achieve product market fit. All these studies say they scale too soon, which is a fancy way of saying they, they didn't figure out the value proposition, right? Mm -hmm. And you never saw a business plan that talked about fax machines that came out in the last 10 years. But sure. so you guys did a great job of figuring out how does your market really work, not in some you know, business school right. on the whiteboard sense, should it work? So talk about how you, you, know, you, built, an, you built an online ordering system via fax. Talk about how you figured that out, because and, 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 I think that's a, a big challenge when people aren't coming from an industry, is really understanding how it works, respecting that, and building your solution around how the industry works instead of trying to make them work your way. Sure. The way we solve problems is we, we try to understand what the core questions are. So in, this, in the case you're talking about, what's the core, what's the core value to the people that are paying us? They're, they're entrepreneurs that own restaurants, and that's orders. So let's do our best job at driving orders. Well, how do we 
get that order into the restaurant's hands. Well, it's, it's not scalable to call everyone in. So what tools do the restaurants have in the restaurant that are actively being used? And the fax machine turned out to be the platform they liked. And, and it works because this is how they get uh, their food. So they, they fill out an order requisition. They drop in the fax machine. It goes to Cisco or US Foods. And it comes, you know, the driver shows up the next day. This is how they operate. So we said, hey, let's just repurpose their existing hardware. Let's send faxes across there. And then here's, here's how we made sure it worked, is we had an automated confirmation call. So we, you know, Mike actually coded up uh, through an open source Asterix platform a, common, or a, a confirmation call that would play an MP3 that was you know, Mike's voice saying, you just received a Grubhub order. We've definitely had a lot of learning experiences. I would say that it's not, in my mind, you make mistakes, but, but it's not like it's a failure. Like you make a mistake, it, you make a dumb call, you learn from it quickly and you, and you pivot, you change, you change what you're doing. And so, you know, our business model was wrong. Like it wasn't aligned with restaurants when we started the company. And so the best thing you can do is be very aware, you know, when you're going down the wrong path as easy, as, as quickly as possible. And I used to, I used to talk with Mike about like radar, you know, and this was like early in 2005 and we're saying, and I'm, I'm picking up that something's off. Something's going wrong and we're not doing this right. What can we do better? What, what's really causing the friction in this process? And so it's, I wouldn't say we've never like allowed ourselves to go too far down the wrong path. We, we catch ourselves, we, we try to right that wrong, and we're typically a better company because it's of it. They get better every game kind of.